I came to Reiki and I was like this desert. There was something missing in my life. So it's great to be here, just to gain the wisdom of these people who have been practicing Reiki for, I don't know, <laughs> more than, than my lifetime. The practice is so simple and the teaching of Reiki is so simple. It's carried Reiki throughout the world. But there's a natural desire in us as human beings to have a location that we relate to as a kind of center or a touchstone. A physical base where you can show generosity and gratitude for the things that we've received from Reiki, personally or as a community. To learn, to be healed, to help, to serve. Because we are all interconnected with each other. And everything comes together. It, whatever we do becomes some kind of a unity, which is a great experiential model for what we're trying to create in Reiki Home. I want to jump in with the group and do some fairly deep work, and then we'll see how we land, okay? From the very moment that we decided to pursue the realization of Reiki Home, the RFI board has really needed to have assistance in lifting uh, the way that we thought about the Reiki Home and to enter in a new way of working with each other. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is form into groups of three. I think my sense is that this is a group like many enthusiastic and hardworking boards that has a lot of goodwill but not a whole lot of experience manifesting something of the nature they're trying to create. What are the key problems facing the formation of the Reiki home? And what are the arenas of greatest potential? I, I would say to serve as a bridge between um, the practice of Reiki and the global community. All of that is enabling potential. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Now I get it. I want to see us being able to involve the other aspects of our lives played out in this in a way that reflects the Reiki principles. What you're actually trying to do is call a t an entirely new pattern into the world. Ben is driving us crazy with his questions, but you know, we are not only doing this heady stuff. Just a continuous sound. I've drawn the use of instruments and sound to voice what's hard to put into words and to make uh, audible what, what is perhaps hard to access. We were able to work out a lot of the issues that came up for us personally and also energetically through the actual playing. It's about communication and how we relate to each other. This group at this particular juncture is interested in how do they develop their capacity to be in appropriate relationship to this place, but also how do you foster the Reiki community's ability to engage in healing um, the planet. A lot of the work has to do with reimagining what and who we are. We're allowing a kind of pre-existing set of beliefs, of habits of thinking, of ways of working to inhibit the full potential of this. Put yourself into the life of the people you want to serve. One of my fears is that the people determining policy that affects all of us often have never been alone in nature and don't know how to handle solitude. And, you know, we're seeing some of the consequences of that at the moment. I think we haven't necessarily been respectful of each other or of the environment that we live in or the globe. So there's a greater calling and a greater need for people around the world to take greater responsibility. 
we've been able to make sense of our doubts and our worries and our wonderings and to put them to good use. The difference now is that I'm involved in something that really matters to me. A relationship that has such far-reaching and deep implications to it. There's just this sense of movement, especially now. There's just this sense of clarity. There's a sense of freedom. There's a call. And it's a call of wildness this unknown, this untamed energy that's just pulsating here. There's lots of energy around this place. And to see that is, I think, a huge um, well, igniting force inside of me. This place here, when you put your feet on this earth, it's like a heartbeat coming up. And now I feel that we need a space to hold the physical inheritance and the energetic inheritance. And I've always seen a group of people learning together to understand what this place wants to become. That's exactly what's starting to move within this group. I think Reiki has been very largely focused on the personal. Personal development, personal healing, and I think that you can't stay there forever, right? It's not, it doesn't allow enough developmental potential. The key to transforming the way we are currently living on this planet has to do with laying hands on the earth. And if we're in that kind of relationship with the land, we can't help but be in that kind of a relationship with one another. It's not possible. I wanted to be open to everyone, especially Reiki people from all different lineages. To let in other thoughts without losing our roots. And spread and encourage people and, and inspire people. I feel a river is flowing inside of me again. This place could be the symbol of what Reiki did to me personally. Working with others to make rivers flow again, to make this place living again. There could be orchards and grass again <laughs> if we just move into a regenerative relationship with the land. An experience of a harmonious development. This gives us an opportunity to apply the Reiki principles in a physical context and create a nourishing place that's self-supporting and that gives people that sense of wonder and awe. Like the sun and all the rays going out, all other places of the world that are filled with Reiki would connect to this place. They get a lot of power and lots of energy from the center, from the Reiki home. Even if it sounds impossible, it's a dream that can come true. The Reiki home is actually coming alive. There's no need to ask the question, is it real? It's here already.